So I get this question quite frequently. Um, people call, they say they have discolored water. Uh, the water has been clear for years and then all of a sudden it's become dirty. Now, the one thing that I always ask the customer on the phone, I go, 10 years ago, did you have five people living in the house and then now you only have one or two? And very commonly they go, yes. Our kids were here, we had three kids, they're all old now, they've grown up, went to college, they've moved out, and now it's just me and my husband. Why is my water yellow? It's yellow because you're not using it as frequently as you used to. You, the water in the well is becoming stagnant and that's promoting bacteria growth and iron and it sits down there and it multiplies and it just gets worse. And this video is a very, very good explanation for just that. You've got one person living in a house and the well is 50 years old and it's never been a problem. And he said that it was okay, it was manageable to deal with for a little bit and then after about 18 months, it's just basically, uh, it's gotten worse. So I see this quite frequently and uh, I just wanted to share it with you. So enjoy the video. So we, uh, we took the lid off of the pump house and we looked down here at the well and I notice that the casing is broken right there. Um, see if you can pull that mesh out. And just let's see. Oh my the God. The They've that? cut it and flared it open. So they could camera it a bit. I have no, no idea they why they did that. That is just blowing my mind. You never know what you're going to see when you get to a job sometimes. Nope. That is definitely a first for me. I've never seen somebody cut the casing and flare it out. That's not even the right size well seal. Really. No, that's that's five and five eighths casing with a six inch well seal. That's why I sell the five and five eighths well seals on my website now, because so many people can't get the right size. Yep. Right. Most people get the the six and a quarter thinking that it's the right size, five. but it's not. I think that's fine. Casings right. changed too many times over the years. Okay, let's go get the camera. Let's stick it down there. We'll run some water and we'll see if uh, if he's got leaky casing. Or if he's just got shallow casing and it's letting in water, you know, right where the casing meets the bedrock. But we can uh, we can drain water right here at this. So uh, I'm going to go get the camera and stick it in there and see what we find. Okay, so I've got my camera right here. And I'm going to go ahead and start the process of going down and see what we find. It's not draining fast enough. It's not draining fast enough. Oh, <clears throat> what have we learned so far? Um, we learned that the well makes a boatload of water, and I can't over pump the well. I can't get the water level to drop down about no more than 50 foot, and then it kind of equalizes out. So the camera is kind of out of the equation. I can't see anything because the water's so discolored. But um, the well being five and five eighths inch casing tells me that the well is old. Now the house, if you look at the house, the house is new. But we come over here and we look at all this. That right there is an old cast iron drain pipe. So what that tells me is there used to be an old home place here and it was torn down. The new house, they're trying to utilize the old well that was probably punched by a old cable machine probably in the 60s or the 70s or something like that so it's a very very old well now when we uh we stuck the camera down there and i i didn't show you that because uh we couldn't really see anything uh when i tried to record the screen just due to the sunlight but we actually saw a spider um it, i call it a helgramite but it's like a long big centipede and it was down there trying to bounce on the top of the water and climb up the casing and i could see it on my camera it's kind of weird um but uh yeah so the well <laughs> is not sanitary right now more or less because it's got bugs in it but what it also has is heavy heavy concentrations of iron the water is actually yellow so what i did i went ahead and i took this i left the other partial bag in there put a bag of pool shocket in the well and I dumped it right in their split 
And what I'm doing, I'm taking the garden hose right now from here and I'm basically circulating the chlorine. So I'm trying to wash off the walls because there's a lot of like iron buildup on the casing walls and I don't believe the well has been sanitized in quite some time. So we're gonna circulate the water for about 30 minutes and then I'm gonna take the garden hose back out and throw it out in the yard. And hopefully if we run it long enough, the well will actually clear up. If this has been used for 30 years, um, it may need a liner. The, uh, the metal casing probably has rotted out um, at the threaded joints and it's time to slip plastic casing inside of it. But uh, we have to make sure that we have 20 feet above us to where we can stand pipe up here. It's going to be kind of difficult to put a liner in this well only because we're working inside of this small pump house. It, it kind of makes things a little bit more aggravating. And then the whole deal with the casing flared out, I'm not too happy about that, but it is what it is. So we're going to let this thing circulate for a little while and then uh, see what we can get from that. All right, we have let the system circulate for about 20 minutes. So we decided to pull the hose out to allow it to uh, dump out the discolored water out of the well. And look how discolored it is now. It's a lot worse than it was to begin with. The, uh, the chlorine really does a number on the iron. And it helps the iron release to where it can be pumped out. So now the ideal thing to do would be to allow this hose to run for a minimum of an hour, just evacuating the well until the water becomes clear. After about an hour or two, if it still hasn't cleared up, the idea would be to shut it off allow it to rest and then come out here tomorrow again and turn it back on and let it do it again now you can do that with this well because this well produces so much water that it doesn't drop below 50 feet in the borehole um, typically most wells don't produce so much water that you could leave a garden hose run open-ended or it would end up you know running dry but in this situation the well is probably 100 feet maybe 110 120 because it's so old, they didn't have the capabilities of drilling really deep. So they, uh, they basically hit a vein uh, up top. The pump just kicked on. Um, they hit an upper vein, which is high in mineral content. And this is what you get with high mineral content. You get iron, you get manganese, you get calcium, which is hard water. You get all sorts of stuff. So because this well hasn't been sanitized and who knows how long, it's had the ability to grow bacteria, and this is what you're seeing. You're seeing all the mineral build up, and it's uh, changing the color of the water. So we're trying to do a whole lot of cleaning in a short period of time. So you see that? You see how it just cleared up? It's crazy how it did that just on camera. So it cleared up a lot, considerable uh, compared to what it was about 15 seconds ago. It'll go back through a phase where it gets dirty brown again. Um, it's kind of yellow right now. Um, starting to get a little bit more discolored but basically what that's doing that means there's a fresh water vein down below and there's a dirty water vein up top so a liner would fix that you go down and you put your packer uh, at the location where the dirty water vein is unfortunately we're not able to see where that vein is so what we would do when we push a packer in a well like this as you push the rubber boot through the metal casing, it has a specific feel to it. So as you press it down, it slides a lot easier. But when the rubber packer, the boot, when it goes into the rock borehole of the well, you actually feel that as you press it down. So what we would do, we would slide a liner in this well and we would do it all off of feel. We would, once we felt it go from smooth to a rough transition, we would push maybe 10 more feet and as long as it held itself then we would clamp it off and we would put the pump in it we would test it and we would see that if the water cleared up then we'd be good to go and we'd have to fill the the uh in between the liner in with cement and make it permanent but that's why we wait we wait to allow the customer to use the water for about a month before we cement in a liner to make it permanent because we don't want to cut off the only water that the well is producing and we don't know 
if there's more than one water vein in this well. It's all, you know, hypothetical. You have to kind of use your brain and think, you know, is there so much water coming in only at one vein or is there multiple veins? You just don't know. But you have to make those decisions based on, you know, a hypothesis. So we're trying to make the best educated guess that we can with minimal information. So what we want to do first, we want to try to clean the well with chlorine. And then if we can't get the water to be clear, then we will proceed with putting in a liner. You can see it getting getting dirty brown again. And see, every time it gets dirty brown, the stream is stronger. And I see, look, it's clear again. So the pump was running, and then the pump shut off. It's basically getting water from down below, and then when the pump kicks on, it's starting to lower the water level of the well. It's bringing the dirty water that's up top closer to the pump, so it gets dirty. Then the pressure tank will store six, seven, eight gallons of water, and it'll be clear, and then the pump kicks off, the water level will raise back up, some fresh, clean, clear water will get to it, and then the cycle will repeat. If you do it long enough, as I have, you understand what's going on. But this is a really cool one to show everybody. One second it'll be clear, and the next second it'll be muddy. So all you really have to do is just treat the well with uh, high amounts of chlorine and let it sit for a little while and then pump it off. If you would allow this hose to run for a few hours, there would be nothing left but clean, clear water. Then if you let the wet the well sit stagnant for a while, then it'll give it the ability, you know, stagnant water can grow bacteria. So then you end up getting the result that you have here, which is discolored water. Hey, there it is. It's clear again. That's so crazy. It's just dirty water mixing with clean water. It makes so much water off. If, if, if there wasn't two different veins, then there wouldn't be clear water and dirty water. So there's got to be two different water veins. Yeah, so there's got to be one that's feeding it dirty and one that's feeding it clean. And it really needs a well liner in order to separate those two. Or we're just going to sit here and pump it off for a little bit longer. We've got one more job to get to today. And the sun is getting close to the horizon. We're running out of daylight. So I'm going to call the homeowner. I'm going to tell him what we've got. And then, depending on what he says, I may just let this run because he'll be here in about an hour and a half. And it's about as long as it needs to run. So, uh, I'm going to go ahead and wrap the video up here. Hope you all enjoyed it. Thanks for watching. See you all in the next one. Peace. So, we're about to leave and I still got the, uh, the hose running. And look how much clearer it is now compared to what it was earlier. Sometimes wells just need a little bit of time of running. Sitting stagnant, not much usage. Not much usage on a well will cause a lot of problems, so sometimes you just need to go and run a lot of water out in your yard.